Hello and welcome to another Cotton Incorporated podcast. My name is John Devine, Senior Economist. This podcast is the second in a series that discusses Chinese cotton policy and its relationship to global cotton prices. The purpose of this segment is to provide an overview of the policy tools the Chinese government uses to interact with the cotton market. An understanding of these tools will be helpful in later discussions of how Chinese policy has affected global price direction. The two tools that the Chinese government uses are the reserve system and import quotas. The reserve system operates by making purchases and then withholding the cotton that was bought from the market. Over time, this cotton is sold back to the market through controlled auctions. Import quotas regulate the amount of cotton that can be brought into the country and are another way of managing domestic supply. Together, these two tools allow the Chinese government to heavily influence domestic prices. Both of these tools have been in existence since China made reforms to become more market oriented in the late 1990s. After the implementation of price guarantees that followed the 2010-2011 spike in fiber prices, the reserve system became much more aggressive in terms of the proportion of the Chinese harvest that it purchased. Throughout its existence, the reserve system has operated to help limit volatility. In periods of falling prices, such as the one that occurred with the global recession during the 2008-2009 crop year, the reserve system was an active buyer of cotton. By buying and withholding cotton from the market, the reserve system absorbed some excess supply and likely prevented domestic prices from falling further than they did. In periods of rising prices, the reserve system can sell the cotton it purchased. When sales from reserves take place, available supply increases, and this may limit upward movement in prices. A period when we saw heavy selling from reserves was in the 2009 and 2010 crop years. During the 2010-2011 crop year, reserves were effectively sold out, and the depletion of Chinese reserves could be seen as a contributing factor to the spike in global prices that occurred during the 2010-2011 season. Since the spike in fiber prices, the reserve system has taken on a new role as the mechanism that enforces the price guaranteed by the Chinese government. The price that was promised to growers in the spring of 2011 was high relative to historic averages and has been maintained or increased every year since. As world prices return to levels similar to those experienced prior to the spike, a record separation emerged between Chinese prices and world prices. This separation made it more profitable for cotton to be sold to the reserve system than on the open market. As a result, Chinese reserves have increased dramatically over the past several crop years. The accumulation of cotton in the reserve system concentrated global supplies in China. With large proportions of the Chinese crop flowing into the reserves over the past few crop years, a major question for the global cotton market has been how will the Chinese government choose to supply its mills? Would it be through sales from reserves or through imports? What we saw in the 2011-12 and 2012-13 crop years was that the answer to this question was generally through higher levels of imports. The impact stemming from higher Chinese import demand will be explored in the next podcast. But to better understand these market impacts, it is important to know how the Chinese import quota system is implemented. Under the quota system, there are several possible routes for cotton to be brought into China. Each of these implies different tariff rates, and in turn, these rates imply the price paid by mills can vary. In the remainder of this episode, we will describe some details related to the different ways cotton is permitted to be imported into China. The first possibility for bringing cotton into China is known as tariff rate quota, or TRQ. Part of China's accession to the WTO in 2001 required China to allow a certain volume of cotton to be imported at low duty rates. This volume was set at about 4 million bales and is assessed a 1% tariff. Each year, the government decides how to allocate TRQ imports to mills. In contrast to the TRQ, where the volume is set, there are other types of quota in which the volume varies. There are two tariff categories of variable volume quota, sliding scale and processing trade. As was the case with TRQ imports, the allocation among mills 
is determined by the government for both of these types of quota. As the name suggests, the tariff rate for sliding scale quota varies. Sliding scale tariff rates are a function of import prices and were designed to insulate growers in low price environments, reaching levels as high as 40 percent when the value of imported cotton is low. They are also designed to help mills in high price environments, dropping as low as 5 percent when the cost of imported cotton is high. At current market prices, around 90 cents per pound, the sliding scale tariff is around 10 percent. Processing trade quota is issued in the case when cotton fiber imports are tied to the export of downstream textile goods like apparel. If a mill is export oriented, they may receive processing trade quota from the government. Processing trade quota is not assessed any duty. The final way that cotton can be brought into China is outside of the quota system. When China joined the WTO, they were required to create an option in which imports could be brought into the country without government imposed limits or quotas. However, if a mill wants to import cotton outside of the quota system, they must pay a 40% duty rate. Given the high tariff, this possibility was not pursued in the past. Nonetheless, in recent crop years, with the record separation between Chinese and world prices, it has been a viable option at certain times. During these time periods, the threat of increased Chinese imports supported world prices was a likely factor preventing them from decreasing further relative to prices in China. That brings us to the end of this podcast. The purpose of this episode was to provide an introduction to the policy tools that the Chinese government uses to interact with the cotton market. It is hoped that this overview is helpful for the discussion of how Chinese policies have influenced global cotton price direction that is contained in the next part of this series. If you are interested in more information, please listen to the other podcasts. In addition, you can email me at the address shown here. Thank you for your interest.